video, we're going to learn about graphing parametric equations using the graphing calculator. First, you're going to go into your mode and you're going to change from function mode to parametric mode. And then you're going to click your y equals and you can see that we've automatically been set up with each function containing an x equals equation and a y equals equation. I've already went ahead and input our parametric equation from that first example. x equals 24 root 2t and y equals 24 root 2t minus 16t squared. And if we just went ahead and hit graph at this point, it looks like we can probably see a portion of it, but we're not seeing the entire portion of the graph. So let's go back into our window and let's think about some reasonable values. <clears throat> T min and T max represent the amount of time. And we're going to change our maximum time to 2.2. Your T step is the increments of time in which it's counting. Your X min, let's go ahead and change to negative 5. And your X max is going to be 80. So that is your minimum and maximum horizontal distance y min let's change to negative 5 and y max let's change to 22 and now let's go ahead and hit graph again now we can see a much better idea of that projectile motion that we looked at in example one and one really cool feature of graphing these plane curves with a graphing calculator is tracing so go ahead and hit the trace button on your calculator and you can see that we have a reference of each point, we have three variables. So when time equals zero, both x and y equals zero. And then as we scroll to the right, our increments of time are increasing by 0.1. <clears throat> and we can see each x and y variable for each increment of time. So if we keep scrolling, we can see that after one second has passed, the x variable is about 34 feet and the y distance or the horizontal distance is about 18 feet and we can keep scrolling and we can find when time equals 2 what are the x and y variables if we go back to our window and let's change our um, t min to 0.5 and our T max to 1.5. What happens here is we have told our calculator to only compute what's happening with this projectile between a half second and one and a half second. So it's kind of cool that you can play with the window and you can play with the different variables um, to produce different portions of the graph. Let's go back and change this to 0 and 2.2. And now let's also think about changing our t-step to 0.5. Changing our t-step to 0.5 means we're going to be counting in increments of 0.5. So this is an interesting approach because we're, our calculator is only calculating um, each half second, which makes it look more like a choppy curve than a smooth curve. So the more, uh, the, the smaller you make the increments of time, the smoother the curve is going to be. And the greater increments of time that you count by, the more choppy the graph will be. Uh, let's go back into our mode. Let's change it back to function mode. And we can graph the function that we found we eliminated the parameter. So the polar, or I'm sorry, the parametric equation that we just looked at, <clears throat> when we eliminated the parameter, we came up with the equation x minus x squared over 72. Let me change these numbers here. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this. And you should notice that we end up getting the exact same curve. But the difference is, when we trace this curve, we can only see x and y. We aren't given that additional information about time. So the benefit of using parametric equations as opposed to just rectangular equations 
is that we have a third piece of information for every point along the graph. We have time that corresponds with each x and y value. Let's go ahead and change back to parametric mode and let's clear these equations out and let's take a look at that second example. The second example was three cosine theta and I'm just going to use t for the variable again uh, and we've got y equals four sine theta. In your window, t rep represents theta in this case, and if we th want to think about um, our angle being between 0 and 2 pi, our t min would be 0 and our t max is going to be 2 pi. So let's go ahead and change that to 2 pi. t step, I'm going to make um, 0.1 just to keep it relatively small. x min, I'm going to change to negative 3, and x max, 3 y min negative 4, negative 4, and y max positive 4, and let's go ahead and graph. So here you can see the graph of the ellipse that we created. Uh, the scale looks a little bit weird because I um, changed it to negative 3 and positive 3 on the x-axis and negative 4 and positive 4 on the y-axis, so it looks a little squished. Um, but this should correspond with the same graph that you got when you graphed by hand. When we trace this, you can see that at time zero, or at theta zero in this case, when the angle is zero, the x value is three and the y value is zero. And as we scroll to the right, the, as the angle increases, the x value increases but the y val and the y value increases and then once you get up here to the top once you get to an angle of approximately pi over 2 you continue to move around the ellipse and we can keep scrolling all the way up until we get to 2 pi and that's as far as we can go if you changed your window to go beyond 2 pi let's say we change it to 4 pi and we go back to our graph. You can kind of see it happened quickly, but it, it looped around the ellipse twice. And if we trace, again, we start at the same point, and as you scroll to the right, that represents the angle increasing. And as the angle increases, you can find all of the corresponding x and y values around the ellipse. This one will go around twice because we've changed our angle to include all the way up to 4 pi, but it should stop after the second time around.